Hey y'all. It uh, is Saturday, June 10th, 2023, and I wanted to talk about using VIX futures uh, as an intermarket relationship for your trading. So VIX is the CBOE volatility index, and it measures the volatility or the gamma in the market. And basically when VIX is going up, stocks are going down. And when stocks are going down, VIX is going up. So if you just use it like that. The, there are two ways that ICT teaches to use, inter, excuse me, to frame a higher term or a higher time frame narrative. Uh, and one of them is your standard way of looking for inefficiencies and in liquidity uh, above and below price. So we go on our ES, we can set a higher time frame narrative by looking for inefficiencies and liquidity that are above and below current market price. So we can see that there's a fair value gap below uh, current market price and then above market price, uh, there, there are some things there on the continuous contract you would see. Uh, the other way that you can frame a higher time frame bias is to look for intermarket relationships. So specifically, the market relationships that we'd be looking at for the index futures is we'd look at bonds. So I have the 10 year up here. Uh, we look at the dollar and I have the dollar futures here. And we'd also look, and he hasn't talked about this yet, but I have a feeling he will. Uh, I'm just using his principles and then extracting that extracting the logic, right? So we're, if we're setting a higher time frame narrative for our futures contracts, we, we use both inefficiencies and liquidity on a higher time frame like the weekly or the daily that are above and below current market price, but we also look for inter-market relationships. Generally speaking, when the dollar is going up, stocks are going down. Generally speaking, if bonds are going up, stocks are going down, although those two relationships are not the strongest relationships always. But that's the general rule of thumb. The strong relationship is the volatility index or the VIX. Now, the volatility index is a futures contract uh, that's that uh, you can see it has contract contract months. Now, I'm using the continuous contract, and normally I wouldn't like to do that, but the the VIX basically reprices itself, so it's not. Uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Now, you can get the real time data on TradingView for the VIX. Uh, for two dollars a month, so I got I went and subscribed to the CBOE uh, data, and you can I got it for two dollars and thirteen cents with tax for a month. So I think we can handle that. Now, one of the reasons why I'm thinking that the S and P 500 or the ES might be just about ready to turn down is that we're coming up on a rollover on VIX. Now, every time that VIX rolls over. Oftentimes it's going to create these gaps. So we can see that on the last uh, VIX rollover it did that, and then on the prior VIX rollover it did that. Didn't do it on the one in March to April, but uh, it did it f February to March, and then uh, January to February it did not do it, but it does it quite a bit. Um, anyways, you want to one of the intermarket relationships that I would advise you to look at is to look at the VIX. Now, if we look at the VIX and we go on a monthly chart, the same principles that apply to looking at our standard market analysis is gonna to apply to the VIX as well. Now, it looks a little bit sloppier. It looks a little bit messier. It's, because uh, it's a synthetic index, right? But the same, like, basic principles apply. So we come up on the VIX and we notice that the the VIX is coming down to an order block on the left. It's coming down to the second order block uh, and th these two order blocks. Now, in addition to that, we can see that below there was a gap here back in July of 2019 that price might be, the VIX might be interested in. But um, I don't think so. I think, I think when I'm looking at the daily VIX, I see a couple of things. So number one, we, we have a rebalanced gap above, but we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down days on the VIX, right? And we're coming up on a contract expiration on the VIX um, the 13th of June, which is going to be on Tuesday. And I have a feeling the VIX is going to gap up, meaning that if it does do that, we should see a down move in stocks. 
In addition to that, we look on the four hour chart where the VIX is really beat up, right? And the VIX recently just tested out what I would call this an order block right here. And we're just hovering right around that 15 spot two area. And we have inefficiencies above. So we have fair value gaps that are sitting above all the way up until VIX 20. So I have a feeling that uh, stocks are about ready to go down temporarily, um, in part because of a few intermarket relationships, but not just the VIX. Dollar index to me looks like it bounced off of this order block that was below market price, and I, to me it kind of feels like, well, if it bounced below the, this order block that was sitting below market price, maybe it wants to go higher up into this inefficiency at 104. And then bonds are kind of looking similar in that they it looks like the 10-year uh, bounced off of the consequent encroachment of this of this wick and we have a fair value gap above current market price so I'm kinda thinking that bonds the 10-year might want to come up above the current market price up to 115 spot 04 uh, that's really what I'm thinking uh, bonds want to do now in addition to that we see the 10-year came down and it ended up you know getting very close to the consequent encroachment of this fair value gap on the left so to me it looks like bonds want to go up it looks like vix wants to potentially go up and it looks like dollar index also wants to go up and those are all in line with telling me that this rally in stocks might be coming to a close next week so i think that the vix is going to go up next week um how many weeks we've had one two three we've had a full month of, of vix going down of volatility going down and we're reaching some key monthly levels, um, that 15 big number on VIX. And then, as we can see here on the monthly chart, we're coming right up on this volume imbalance on VIX. Now, did we actually trade into it? Not quite, so maybe VIX wants to go a little bit lower before we move back up, but um, we're getting pretty close to where I think the VIX would want to price higher, in which case you know, we would expect to see a move down in stocks. So. That's how you also set your narrative uh, using intermarket relationships. So two ways to set your narrative. One of them is the higher time frame inefficiencies and liquidity, but the other are these intermarket relationships. So just to roll, roll it down in your mind one more time, if VIX is going down, stocks are going up. That's the rule of thumb. If dollars going up, stocks going down. If bonds going up, stocks going down. It's, you know, with the VIX, it's a pretty one-to-one -one correlation. With bonds and the dollar, uh, it's less of a one-to-one -one correlation. But all of those relationships you're looking at. And if all three are lining up and telling you that, you know, bonds are looking like they want to find support here, the 10 years kind of, to me, this, this feels like an accumulation on bonds on the four-hour chart. We didn't, we didn't quite break any structure on the one-hour yet, so don't, don't call me on it yet. But... You know, VIX is looking like maybe here on this one hour chart, it's thinking about, um, hasn't broken any structure yet on the one hour chart, but it kind of looks to me like it, you know, it's it's beat up quite a bit. And then dollar index, you know, similar story, it came down to an order block and some inefficiencies that were below current market price. Now, one of the things on the dollar index that I'm looking at is uh, we've got We've got an inefficiency up here. 103 spot 65. There's a gap up here that I think that the dollar index might be interested in. Now, I'm not using the Dixie or the CFD. I'm using the actual September's futures contract for the dollar index. And I'm doing that because I want to leave in the gaps. I want to leave in the inefficiencies to more clearly see them. So, you know, I ICT doesn't do that, but I, I it's... I want to see all the gaps, basically, and so we do see that there are gaps on the dollar index around 103 spot 65. I think price might be interested in that. We also have um, another imbalance up here around 104 spot 115, and then on our daily chart, we also have another volume imbalance up around 104 spot 5. All of that's a lot of imbalances above. Now, obviously, below current market price, we have more inefficiencies. So I'm not dead set on that. But to me, I think that's the narrative I'm setting. And then the VIX is going to support that narrative, and the bonds are supporting the narrative as well. 
So I think next week we're looking at probably up on Monday, and then when the VIX contract expires on Tuesday, I think we're probably looking down on Tuesday. So that's it, folks. Uh, you can subscribe to real VIX, real real time data on the VIX on TradingView for two dollars a month. It's definitely worth it. Um, it's one of those intermarket relationships that you can use just like you can use um, the bonds and the dollar. Like, for example, whenever VIX gaps up, just like any other gap on any other product, you expect that the VIX is going to want to come in and rebalance that gap, right? Like it did it did uh, here, for example. So VIX gapped up on the contract expiration. We first redeliver it, and then we rebalance it. Now, if you were following this, you could basically follow you don't you don't trade the VIX directly, right? But you use it to as a barometer for the stocks. So hopefully we'll get a nice healthy gap up on VIX, and then uh, we'll we'll go from there. Um, remember that whenever we're looking at a gap or any inefficiency, we start by looking at the at that fifty uh, percent level. Like like on this gap, we would start at the fifty percent level, and we see that it did find support there temporarily. Uh, uh, and then we look for price first to re-deliver it and then to rebalance it. So that's that's what we're expecting with gaps. And the lucky thing about the VIX is that there are actual visible gaps. So that's what I'm hoping that we see on the VIX. I'm hoping that on this contract rollover on Tuesday, we see a nice gap up. That would mean stocks are going down. And then over time, the VIX would come in and fill that gap. But we'll see on uh, our next rollover is Tuesday. So we will see what the VIX does then. That was it, folks. Bye-bye.